Hiro Mashima has this notorious reputation of constantly reusing assets from his previous works and uh, sometimes from other works. Recycling character designs is the most obvious example of this. It uh, reminds me of the Spider-Man meme where they are pointing at each other. Like you have Sighard who looks like Jalal who looks like Justice. You have Shiki who looks like Aki who looks like Haru who looks like Natsu who looks like the other Shiki who looks like this new guy from Mashima's new manga. If you're thinking about art style, uh, don't. Just a quick skim through his works is enough to notice the similarities. Now reusing designs and characteristics is something every artist does. From Togashi to Rumiko to Oda to Ryuhei Tamura to Hirano Koha, everybody does it. It's a practice with a long history that started with Osamu Tezaka, the god of manga himself. Osamu Tezaka created this thing called the star system in Japan, where characters were treated like actors. Just how an actor takes on a variety of different roles, so would the character. However, this writing formula wasn't welcomed by most manga artists for a few good reasons. Imagine the main character of a manga, the star of a manga, shows up in another as a backseat character, or maybe as a villain, or even as the main character once again. Sure, the personalities would be different, but visually, which is the most important thing, it's the same character. Just like how you cannot alter the appearance of an actor that much, DiCaprio will still look like DiCaprio in any movie he plays, even if he grows a beard, grows his hair, wears a hat, you also cannot alter the appearance of a character that plays a role. It's fun when old characters are used as cameos or easter eggs in new series, or have something like an episodic role. But when you spend 545 chapters with Erza Scarlet, only to see her again in Eden Zero, it, it really makes you think. Especially when she's part of the Oration Sess. But which Oration Sess? The Oration Sess from Rave Master? The Oration Sess from Fairy Tale? Or the Oration Sess from Eden Zero? Oh, wait a second. Is the Oration Sess Interstellar from Eden Zero? Or Galactica? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting carried away. The point is that Hiro Mashima's reuse of assets, because it's not just character designs, but concepts as well, names, mascots, jokes, and so on, is excessive. It's a bit too much. Yet, yes, there is a yet, everything he makes becomes popular. It's like the guy broke the code, found the perfect formula for making a popular series without reinventing anything. I might even say he's the perfect junk food author. I love myself some junk food, I should say no to it more often, but I don't, because it's good, and convenient, and easy to get into, and that sums up my relationship with Hiro Mashima series. Except for Rave Master, Rave Master was a level above everything else he made. I thought perhaps, because it was his first hit series, and there wasn't much to compare it with, but nah, Rave Master was actually amazing. It had some outstanding moments that I remember to this day, a payoff so unbelievably good, that it never left my fucking mind. Yes, I've read Mashima's works and enjoy them very much, and I'm here to break down why that is. How does Hiro Mashima keep on creating hit series? What do Hiro Mashima's works have in common? It's not a joke guys, it might look like it's phrased as a joke, but I swear it's not. The answer is the same foundational elements. All of his stories take place in a fantasy setting. Eden Zero might take place in space, but good luck trying to argue that it's not a fantasy. Also, they are all battle action shonen with adventures being a major part of them, and let's not forget the comedy. Comedy and recurring gags are a stable pillar of Mashima's works. So, Mashima bases his stories on the same foundational elements, which of course makes them have the same kind of feel to them, especially when the characters come along, and that should make this a massive downside to his approach, right? Well, actually, not necessarily, because there's also the other side of the argument. Mashima knows that those elements are what his readers are interested in, and so, by building each new story on the same foundation, he makes sure his audience, who read his previous work, will instantly feel familiar with the new one. This means that it's highly likely people who enjoyed Rave Master or Fairy Tale will also enjoy his newer works, those who enjoyed Eden Zero will enjoy that rogue. This is why I said he is a junk food author. If you usually go to McDonald's to have a Big Mac, would you say you wouldn't try their brand new limited time Philly cheese stack? It's fundamentally the same. Both have a beef patty, a bun, cheese slices, pickles, onions, 
One has lettuce and the other crispy onions, the sauces differ as well, but other than that, they are the same. If you enjoy eating one, you would most likely enjoy eating the other one as well. They are based on the same foundation. Do you see what I mean or am I just promoting McDonald's for free? This is Mashima's brand of manga. Once his audience gets infatuated with one of his works, then with the second, then they will know what to expect from the third. And that keeps them loyal. Just like McDonald's, yes, I'm bringing this up again. You eat a few times there and then you keep going because it's convenient, affordable and it's good, it's good. Everyone can enjoy a Mac, from the annoying little kids to the annoying old people. But not everyone can enjoy a medium rare steak, correct? Does this limit Mashima's horizon in terms of creativity? Absolutely. But does he seem like he wants to break out of it? Absolutely not. There are certain authors who love to fiddle with heavy themes, intricate plots and morally grey characters. Works like Oshinoko, Death Note, High School DD. Series that require the audience to think about what they see, put their minds to work. But that's not Mashima. His manga are those you can pick up at any time and simply enjoy the action sequences, the adventures they drag you into, the silly shenanigans of the characters. Just be entertained, literally just be entertained. He does really well with emotional scenes though, some moments are real tearjerker, especially in Rave Master and Fairy Tale. I have to give him credit for those. He also really knows how to layer his pages and panels to make it easy to read. I never had trouble following the panels and understanding what's going on in a particular scene. He keeps a very tidy layout and I gotta be honest, his art is also gorgeous. You know how people enjoy Marvel movies? They are really popular, aren't they? Even though they're the same? Script, jokes, special effects, narrative. That's because they are easy to get into and everybody can enjoy them. They appeal to viewers of all ages. The Marvel brand also acquired a very loyal and passionate fanbase. Some acquired the older fanatics, but hey, not my problem. They will watch whatever they produce because they know what to expect and they know they will be pleased. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly how Hiro Mashima manages to create hit after hit after hit. I also got to mention that his work ethic is quite incredible. He pumps out manga like they're coming on a conveyor belt. Maybe reusing the same characters is what makes this possible? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. His work philosophy is commendable and I respect that. I like Hiromashima. His manga are entertaining and can be very emotional at times. I know what I get when I pick up one of his works and I believe that's his biggest strength. Besides recycling characters.